So, uh, like, like always, I want to thank you guys for coming out covering Penn State football. Uh, I want to thank the fans. I, I thought that was impressive. Uh, you know, you guys know how we approach it each week. That, that was the Super Bowl for us. Um, but sometimes certain opponents, uh, certain fan bases won't show up like that. And, and we don't have that problem here at Penn State. Week in and week out, the fan base shows up. And not only that, all types of um, you know, discussions out there about possible bad weather, thunder, lightning, you know, this, this doesn't happen. So we don't take it for granted whatsoever. We've got the best fans in America, um, and it is special. And I know I've been here 11 years now, but I do not take it for granted whatsoever. It is, it is awesome. So I want to thank the fans. You know, the game in general, um, you know, really kind of in all three phases. A school record, 718 yards, 409 yards passing, 309 yards rushing. School record for first downs. Uh, defense only gave up 67 yards, the eighth fewest since 1947. Um, I love how we managed the clock at the end of the first half. We had all three timeouts available. We went down and scored. We burned the timeouts. They threw an incompletion on the first play, stopped the clock. We were able to use some timeouts, get the ball back, go down and score again. I thought that was significant. Um, we were more efficient today on offense. We were still explosive. Uh, I think we were 80% on third down, which was big. Um, you know, I, it, we didn't do a great job with the turnover. You know, really kind of a tough situation. With Bo in the game, I think they called a twist, which is what you do a lot of times when you're trying to defend quarterback draw or quarterback running game, and the defensive end just twisted right in, into it. There's no way you're going to see it. Uh, the kid made a hell of a play. But we didn't win the turnover ratio. That was, that was probably the one thing um, that we didn't do a great job of. But uh, we had much better balance on offense. We were able to distribute the ball to a ton of different players. Um, Ty Warren is the best tight end in college football. Uh, the tight end position isn't supposed to be about receiving yards. It's about complete uh, players, blockers, receivers, rushers, throwing the ball. He threw a touchdown. I told him it was one of the ugliest touchdown passes I've ever seen. But it went for a touchdown, which is all that matters. Um, we still got to clean up some penalties, too many penalties. But overall, probably the most important thing is our veteran players played well enough to get a ton of guys in the locker room on the field who deserve to play. And um, that's going to be great film for us to teach off of. That's going to be great film for us to learn from. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're obviously going to enjoy this for a couple hours and then get into next week. The last thing I'll say um, from the fans, we need this place rocking next week. Uh, I'm calling for white out energy. Everybody got me? That could be all your headlines. I'm writing your headlines. I'm the editor. White out energy next week. My man's shaking his head no. No. Yeah. No. So if you like, I tell white out, I pause. You guys are waiting. Energy. So that's going to be big next week. We need this place rocking. But we're going to enjoy this for a couple hours and then, uh, you know, grade the film and then get going on our next opponent. So open up the questions. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic here. We'll go with Mark and then Rich. James, uh, what was falling in the box? And if so, what went into that decision and how do you think it went with his first time up here? I know it's only a few games that he's been on the staff, but uh, can, can you take us through that? Yeah, I, I thought it went really well. Um, I brought it up last week about going up into the box. Tom hadn't been up there in a long time as a head coach. And I, I just think some of the things that he's done as a head coach, he doesn't need to do here anymore um, as a defensive coordinator. And he thought about it ultimately, it was his decision. Didn't want to do it last week, but wanted to, wanted to do it this week. And I don't know if he'll be up there next week, um, but, but it's something to consider. It's something to consider. So I do think I'm a big believer that as a play caller, the best place to call the game, just truly call the game is upstairs. If you're having to manage emotions and leadership on the side, we've got a ton of really good coaches. Um, so in terms of just calling the game, I think it's the best place to do it. Um, 
there's there's some other things that, that I'll get into maybe later on Tuesday with you guys. But um, but I thought it was I thought it was really good, and then we'll have some discussions this week and see if it makes sense for our next opponent. Rich and Jared, did I answer? Did yeah. you have something else? Yeah. Yes, sir. James, you're right. Right here. Sorry. It's okay. Against a team like this in a game like this, is it difficult to gauge how much progress you made? And do you feel like your team is ready for Big Ten play? Um, you know, it's interesting because you, you play this type of opponent and everybody thinks it's, it's just going to be easy, right? Like, you know, they still got scholarship athletes and, and I know they've had some struggles this year. Um, but they came out here and fought. And we started out a little bit slower than I would have liked. Um, but overall, I thought we took a really good step. We went on the road and won in a tough environment. I think West Virginia won today. We went on the road and played a tough environment and had a win. We played well enough to win last week, but probably not up to our standard, which, which I'll admit. Uh, and then I thought this week we did what we, did what we needed to do. So we got to take all three of those different experiences and learn from them um, and then get better this week. And we got a really good opponent uh, coming in. I got a ton of respect for them. Um, it, it's going to be a heck of a game. But, but I do think we've done what we need to do up to this point. It hasn't always been perfect, but there's a lot of places in the country right now that would love to be 1-0 and this week and 3-0 and for the season. So... I'm happy with that, but there'll be a ton of things that we're still going to have to get cleaned up for next week to your point, Rich. Jared and Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. Jared, how are you? Good. Uh, I have to thank you for doing this. I have a quote to you in your opening statement. There you um, go. Thank you. Good. You're very uh, welcome. Yeah, that um, 718 number, I know uh, a lot of us were talking about the change of the offense from last week to this year. Does that number mean anything to you all? And if so, what does it mean? The 718? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you're able to score that many points and that many yards and be explosive, um, you know, we put up some pretty big numbers in the past. Um, but I, whenever you're able to say a school record at a place like Penn State, it's something to be proud of and it's something to build off of. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about it. I, you know, to me, the, the, the more important stat is the yardage differential is the points differential. When you're able to get 718 yards on offense, but only give up 67, that's, I'd be interested to see that, right? That'd be a great stat. What was the largest yardage differential at Penn State in our history? That'd be a good one. Look, look I see Chris is kind of Kincaid looking around. That's gonna create some work with that. They don't wanna do it right now. Um, but to me, that's an important stat because if you, if you get 718 yards on offense, but you give up 500, right? So I think that, that's the important one is, is whenever possible, you want it to be about team and you want it to be a team stat. And that would be a great one. Kincaid, Kincaid you got that? I'm on it. <laughs> Tyler in the back. Hey, Jay, Tyler. I want to make sure I have this right, but um, Omari Evans last year in 10 games, he maxed out at five yards on reception. This is now his fifth straight regular season game with a 25 plus yard touchdown. Can you talk us through <clears> what has just changed for Omari from him going from what seemed like an offensive afterthought to someone who was consistently driving the ball down the field for some of the plays. I think sometimes when I talk about guys, you think I'm just like being super optimistic and things like that. But like, he's a guy that we always had a ton of respect for, uh, the type of athlete he was. I mean, his running, jumping, strength numbers are freakish. Um, I would also say when he first got here, he was probably a little bit more of a track guy than a football guy. And, it, you know, I, I guess I'd say to you, just like I say to the players, like, you got to run your race. Some guys are able, as, as freshmen, by their third game, they're ready. Other guys that we've had here didn't start until, I, I think Nick Scott didn't start until his senior year. And has been in the NFL now going on six years. Um, Dan Chasina walked on here and is now in the NFL for like six years. So like everybody's journey is different. And we used to quote all the time, like comparison is the thief of joy, like run your race. And I know you guys got to see it. You don't want to just hear it from me, but Omari has shown flashes really since we recruited him and came to camp, but it's about consistency and he's practicing more consistent. 
He's competing more consistently. He's gaining confidence. And I think I told you guys, if he had some success, his, his career could go through the roof. Um, so you're starting to see it. And, and I think sometimes you guys think I just say things to you, but it's great when you guys are able to see what we get to see at practice. But I, but I will say this, the biggest difference with him is it's the consistency. It's the consistency at practice that's starting to show up in, in, in games. Last two, Max and Pippen. Hey, James. Hey, man. Um, obviously, I know you're going to get a chance to watch the film close tomorrow, but I think Dejon was in there uh, at safety on the second drive of the game. Um, obviously, a big point of discussion in the wake of uh, KJ's injury. You know, being able to see that group on the field, how are you feeling about the depth there and just kind of quick takeaways from that? Yeah, I think Max Granville was in like Series 3, like. Um, as you guys know, we've had some injuries this year, probably more injuries that we've had in a while, uh, whether they're long-term injuries or guys that are gonna be out a couple weeks and things like that. So um, I know how it is. Like, you know, we don't, we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about injuries. So I can't not talk about injuries and then wanna get credit, you know, when, when, when these guys are out. But at the end of the day, we got a ton of respect for Day Day Lane. We think he's got a very, very bright future. Um, did love for him to be behind KJ and learning from him, but where we're at, you know, we got to speed up his maturation process and get him on the field. And today was great because he got a ton of reps. We'd love to get to the point where you can get him and Zachy playing the two safety spots so we can get Jay Reed back down playing the, the nickel or the line or however you want to describe it. Um, but I thought he did some really good things and he got a ton of reps. So that'll be important for us moving forward. Um, but again, we were able to get, to me, what's interesting, right, is there's a ton of guys that played but played late. But there's also a ton of guys like Day Day, like Granville, that, that played early, early in the game. I think Series 3 or Series 5. So that, that's significant for us and we're going to need it. Coach, you guys came in today, <clears throat> excuse me, averaging, I think, seven penalties a game. You had seven more today. So as you move in the Big Ten play, what are some of the things you guys can do to clean up, especially the uh, free snap? Yeah, I, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Um, to be honest with you, you know, if you look at the analytics and the statistics, they don't really have a significant impact when you talk about winning and losing. But as a head coach, it embarrasses me because it shows a lack of discipline and it's sloppy and it makes things harder than it needs to be. We, we end up you know, making a drive on offense harder. We end up, you know, you, everything for us on offense and on defense, just like everybody else across the country, is you wanna be ahead of the sticks. If it's first and five, because you jumped off sides on defense, you're not gonna get the sacks you want. You're not going to get the tackles for loss you want because they're ahead of the sticks. And now they can run the ball and go quick game, go nakeds and things like that. So um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep my poise, but I'm going to keep people accountable. I'm going to hold the, the staff accountable to it. Um, we're going to get it fixed. Um, I'm totally bald now. I'm, I'm totally <coughs> basically gray. So there's not a whole lot left that I can lose, I guess, gain weight. Uh, eating from stress and embarrassment of penalties. Um, but I ain't got a whole lot left, you know, in terms of uh, what else, right? Maybe gray eyebrows, that's my last thing that goes. But I'm not happy about it at all. Um, so we're we'll, we'll gonna have a lot of discussions about it as a staff, and, and we're gonna work on getting it fixed. But, but you're not going to bring up this point at the end of this game and, and totally piss me off and then ruin my night and, and not enjoy a win where we just won by 50 points and had 700 yards. But you've done it. Like, literally, <laughs> I, was, I was good, and now I'm not good. So thank you. Fumi's real happy with you. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you.